Hi, this is Eric with Parts Doctor, and today we're going to show you how to replace the wiring harness on your Whirlpool dishwasher. These instructions also apply to other Whirlpool Corporation dishwasher brands, including KitchenAid, Maytag, Jenner, Amana, and more. If you need to purchase a new wiring harness assembly for your Whirlpool dishwasher, you can check our website, PartsDoctor.com, where we sell parts for all major appliance brands. The wiring harness assembly connects the dishwasher's electrical components to the main control board. These components include the pump motor, thermistor, heating element, water valve, and more. If any part of the dishwasher's wiring harness or electrical connectors become damaged, corroded, or burned, the entire harness must be replaced. Also note that individual sections of the wiring harness are not sold separately. First, disconnect the power to the dishwasher. If your dishwasher has a power cord, unplug the dishwasher. If your dishwasher is hardwired, you'll need to turn off the power at the breaker before disconnecting the wires in the terminal box, which is located underneath the dishwasher. Next, disconnect the drain hose from the sink, plumbing, or garbage disposal. Then, feed the drain tube and power cord through the holes in your cabinet as far as they'll go. Next, turn off the water shutoff valve for the water supply line. Then, remove the access panel on the bottom of the dishwasher by undoing the retainers. Place a towel or sheet pan under the dishwasher to catch any water that may leak. Now, disconnect the water supply line from underneath the dishwasher. Leave the drain tube attached. Next, open the dishwasher door and remove the screws securing the dishwasher to the countertop. If your dishwasher is side mounted, remove the screws from the cabinet, which may be located behind the cabinet seal or behind the plastic cap on the side of the dishwasher. You may need to lower the dishwasher's leveling legs if it is too tight against the countertop. Now, slide the dishwasher out from underneath the countertop, being sure to feed both the power cable and drain tube through the holes in the cabinet. Open the dishwasher's door. Using a T15 Torx bit, remove these 10 screws from around the perimeter of the door holding the front panel in place. Then, while supporting the panel, close the door without engaging the latch. Gently tilt the panel forward and disconnect the electrical connector by depressing the locking tab. Then, lift the front panel up and away from the arm hinges. The main control board is located here. Before disconnecting the wires, take a picture of the electrical connectors to reference later. To remove the electrical connectors, first remove the connector brace by carefully prying on the four locking tabs, then rotating it down. Now, remove the connector box. Then, carefully depress the locking tabs for each connector and unplug the wiring harness. Now, disconnect the door latch electrical connector by depressing the locking tab. Then, disconnect the electrical connector on the detergent dispenser. Using a pair of pliers, gently pinch the plastic retainers holding the wire to the inner door panel and remove them. Then, remove the ground wire using a quarter inch nut driver. Now, carefully flip the dishwasher onto its back on a soft surface of some kind to avoid scratching or damaging it. With access to the underside of the dishwasher, open the door on the left side of the float housing by pinching the locking tabs together. Then, remove the wire from the retaining slot and depress the locking tab to disconnect the electrical connector. The bottom of the wire guard is held to the dishwasher's frame by two locking tabs. To remove, slide the wire guard to the right and lift up to clear the locking tab on the left side. Then, press the locking tab on the right side through the frame. Using a quarter inch nut driver, remove the screw holding the lower ground wire in place. Then, remove the terminals that connect the wiring harness to the thermostat. Now, locate the drain pump and disconnect the electrical connector by depressing the locking tab. Then, locate and disconnect the water inlet valve electrical connector. Next, make note of the orientation, locate and remove the diverter motor's electrical connectors.
Locate the circulation pump motor and disconnect its electrical connector by depressing the locking tab. Then, locate both heating element terminals and disconnect them. Next, locate the soil sensor assembly on the right side of the sump assembly and disconnect the electrical connector. Using a quarter inch driver, remove the ground wire from the bottom of the terminal box. Remove the screw holding the terminal box to the dishwasher's frame. Then lift the cover off the terminal box. Now carefully untwist the wire nut connections and separate the wires. Then, using needle nose pliers, depress the locking tabs on the black wire retainer and push it through the terminal box. Finally, remove the wires from beneath the retaining clips on the sump assembly. If you need to purchase a new wiring harness assembly, you can check our website, partsactor.com. We'll leave a link in the description below. You want to make sure that you are searching with the model number from the tag in a dishwasher to make sure you are getting the correct part. Before installing the wiring harness, align the control brace to the slots on the control board and set it into place. To install the wiring harness, start by lining it out so the control board connectors is closest to the top of the door and that the remaining wires face the bottom of the dishwasher. Then, reference your photo from earlier and plug the new wiring harness into the control board. Next, set the control box into place and rotate the control board connector into position, ensuring all four locking tabs seat properly. Now, locate the locker of the two purple wires. Then, connect the electrical connector to the detergent dispenser and press the wire retainers back into the holes on the inner door panel. Next, connect the shorter of the two purple wires to the door latch. Now, align the ground wire to the right hinge and reinstall the screw. Next, slide the retainer on the wire guard behind the vapor barrier. Then, align the locking tabs on the guard to the holes in the dishwasher's frame, insert, and slide to the left to secure. Next, locate the shortest brown wire, routed into the float housing, being sure to seat it beneath the retaining tab. Then, press the electrical connector into place and close the float housing door. Next, locate the two power cables and route them through the terminal box and pull until the retainer snaps into place. Join the two black wires together, bearing in mind that it is best to have approximately 1 8 inch of stranded wire above the solid wire. Note that you should not pre-twist the wires when using wire nuts. Insert the pairing into one of the wire nuts and twist it to secure the connection. Then repeat the same steps to connect the white wires. Gently tug on the wires to be sure both connections are secured. Now, tuck the wires into the terminal box and reinstall the cover. Then, align the terminal box assembly to the frame, insert the tab, and reinstall the screw. Locate the two green ground wires. Align the middle ground wire to the frame and reinstall the screw. Then, align the other ground wire to the underside of the terminal box and reinstall the screw. Locate the blue and yellow wire group. Run both the wires underneath the retainer on the side of the sump assembly. Then, connect the yellow wire to the soil sensor assembly. Now, run the blue wire through the retaining slot and connect it to the circulation pump motor. Locate the blue, white, and the blue-red wire groups. Run the cables beneath this retainer on the sump assembly. 
Then plug the blue, white, and the blue, red elbow connectors into the heating element terminals and plug the straight connectors into the thermostat. Locate the blue, red, and brown wire group and route it beneath this retaining tab. Then connect the brown wire to the drain pump motor and the blue and red wires to the diverter motor. Finally, connect the last brown wire to the water inlet valve. Then flip the dishwasher back upright. Now align the hangers on the panel to the arm hinges on the door and gently slide the panel into place. Then reconnect the electrical connector. Now align the screw holes on the panel to the screw holes on the door being sure that the locking mechanism seats beneath the panel. Start by installing the two top corner screws, bearing in mind that the four larger screws belong on the top row. Then, while supporting the panel, we install the remaining screws. To reinstall, begin by laying the water line on the floor so that it is in line with the inlet valve. Then, tape it down so it remains in place when sliding the dishwasher. With the dishwasher near the cabinet, feed the drain tube through the hole located towards the top of the cabinet and feed the power cord through the lower hole. Now, push the dishwasher back a few inches underneath the countertop and continue feeding the drain tube and power cord into the cabinet. Repeat until the dishwasher is in place. With the dishwasher door open, align the holes in the mounting brackets with the pre-existing screw holes under the countertop or with the screw holes in the cabinet if using side mounting brackets. You may need to extend the dishwasher's leveling legs to ensure a tight fit against the countertop. Then, reinstall the two mounting bracket screws. Now, reconnect the water line to the water inlet valve located on the bottom of the dishwasher. Then, reinstall the access panel by aligning and inserting the retainers and securing in place. Reconnect the drain tube to the sink plumbing or garbage disposal. Now, plug in your dishwasher. If your dishwasher is hardwired, you'll need to reconnect wires in the terminal box and restore power by flipping the breaker. Then, turn on the water valve. Finally, test the dishwasher and check for any leaks. And that's it for today's video, and if you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like and comment down below, and for more videos like this, please consider subscribing.